So last week, I saw Under the Skin for the first time, and I loved it. I felt so entranced, especially in the first half of this film, because of how natural and raw it was, with the non-actor cast, the hypnotic score, and the eerie, horrifying alien technology. And since this movie is so raw and thematically loose, I've decided not to use the three-theme structure for this video. The director even said he didn't have themes or message in mind when writing and shooting the film. He just wrote it and shot it and let themes emerge, which explained why I had such a tough time grouping two or three themes together after watching it. Instead, I'm going to explain the symbols, visuals, and ideas in the chronological order of the movie, and I'll give my overall interpretation of the film at the end of the video. So welcome to Classic Explained, episode 22, Under the Skin. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and a comment, it helps so much. If you want to see more of these, please make sure to subscribe as well. Let's get started. <laughs> Since the story of this movie is so incredibly obscure, I need to clarify what I believe this movie is about narratively. So narratively, I feel like the description on Google captures the premise very well. Disguising itself as a human female, an extraterrestrial drives around Scotland attempting to lure unsuspecting men into her van. Once there, she seduces and sends them into another dimension where they are nothing more than meat. So yes, that's the premise on the surface, and we see this play out in the first half of the film very clearly. But more importantly, during her mission, this alien slowly transitions out of an objective, emotionless, inhuman being, and begins to embrace and learn about her female human form. And through this alien's journey, this movie thematically becomes a commentary on the good and bad of humanity, as well as the societal expectations and pressures attached to female beauty. And I'll explain all of this as I go through the entire film starting from the very first shot. The opening shot begins with a slowly growing bright light, as if it's getting nearer and nearer, indicating the alien's entrance into the human world. We hear the alien rapidly learning and developing its human communication skills, as it recites an endless series of English words with similar sounds. And this entire visual opening sequence ends with the formation of an eye. And this visual, to me, is the most important moment to set the stage for the film. This woman's alien perspective is completely fresh and new. It's unaffected and unattached. There are no biases or preconceived notions. And this blank slate of a mind provides a completely objective perspective to uncover the truth of what humanity is. Next, we see a man carrying a dead woman into a van. This man is also an alien who has taken on a human form and is supervising our main alien character as she embarks on her mission to capture human men. The alien man killed this real woman so our main alien character can wear her clothes during her mission. We immediately witness the juxtaposition of inhumanity and humanity as the alien woman emotionlessly removes the clothes from the corpse, while the dead woman has a tear by the side of her eye. This moment establishes how incredibly far away from humanity our main character is, void of human feeling, unlike her human victim. And in the next shot, we see an N on her finger, her first and very most minor encounter with life on Earth, the very first microscopic step into her greater journey into humanity. The first place the woman heads to is the makeup store of the mall, studying and absorbing the human standards of physical female beauty and applying her makeup in that fashion. She is of course only doing this to maximize her chances in capturing her male victims. She has no perception of her own beauty on an emotional level at this point. There is no form of self-esteem or artistic expression within her that drove her to buy the makeup. It's solely for the mission. The woman drives through the streets of Glasgow, Scotland, solely focused on men. She attempts to lure in these various men using techniques of seduction and flirting that she's learning from her environment. And I think at this point, it's important to remember that even though the woman is learning and applying human behaviors, she is still not at all human. She can act like a human and look like a human and learn what humans do but isn't capable of having true human feelings and thoughts. This point is made clear when we see her immediately switch back to this emotionless look whenever a conversation with a man is finished. All she is is this foreign being serving a foreign entity. That's her entire purpose. It's completely alien to us as humans. We see the same alien expressionless state in the motorcyclists as well. Even after the woman is finished with her first victim, she feels 
nothing. And I briefly want to break down why the victims are always captured in this incredibly obscure way. I was watching an interview with the director and he made a statement that I thought was really interesting. We wanted to stay away from alien stuff, alien design. We wanted to create a space that was actually alien. And when I heard this, I thought, yes, that makes perfect sense. This black hole dimension of endless space where victims are submerged into a body melting gelatin like substance is so incredibly unfamiliar to us as human viewers that this is what alien technology should be like. The way it looks and sounds is alien. It shouldn't be comprehensible to us as viewers who are humans. This is why it all looks so weird. It's my favorite part of the movie. I think it's brilliant and gorgeous in many ways, but fortunately, the one sense of clarity we do get is that these bodies are being processed through some sort of alien machinery to serve whatever purpose the aliens need them for. As the woman continues on her search for more men to capture at the beach, we see the prime demonstration of her inhumanity. She speaks with a man briefly by the shore until he suddenly races to save a drowning man who is trying to save his dog. The man she was speaking to, exhausted by the waves and the other man's resistance, ends up unconscious, so she kills him and pulls him back to her van likely to be another victim. She also leaves a very young child by the shore of the beach, likely to die. The woman viewed this entire moment of desperation and misery completely objective with no feeling, as if she was just studying a natural interaction between insects. There's no attachment or even sense of fascination. It's just an absorption of information. However, all the while, she is discovering love, misery, fear, pain, and empathy all in its most intense form, together in one moment. So while I don't believe she is yet feeling these intense human emotions, I believe the intensity of those emotions themselves has affected her subconsciously and will lead her into actually feeling human emotions in the next scene, out in the city. While the woman is in traffic, she is given a rose by the seller, who another driver sent to her. And when she receives the roses, this is the first time she experiences human emotion. She notices the roses have blood on them, and she sees that the seller's hands are bleeding from the thorns on the roses he handles all day. She begins to feel this very subtle shock and slight sense of empathy for his pain. And this, being the first moment of human feeling for her, is the spark that begins her entire journey towards humanity. And it's immediately after this moment that the motorcyclist is performing some sort of checkup on her, like something may have gone wrong with her, because her journey into humanity isn't part of the plan, but I think he only senses it at this moment, he can't completely tell. In the next scene, she explores the city, and very suddenly trips and falls on the sidewalk. And right when she falls, there's a collective act of human kindness and empathy that lifts her back up to her feet. And as she gets up, we see several shots of random people in the city doing random things as the woman looks around at all of them. The entire scene transitions into a series of glowing gold translucent layers of shots of humanity. This all symbolizes the woman's new optimistic wonder for humanity and the human experience. She has gained a perspective of human subjectivity she's no longer an objective, emotionless being. However, unfortunately and inevitably, in the next scene, she experiences the opposite side of humanity, as a group of young men harass her and damage her van. It's clear now that she is experiencing slight human feelings as we see her subtle look of surprise and fear in the moment. And in the next scene, which I would say is the most pivotal scene of the movie, is when she meets the man with the deformed face. As she sets out for him to be her next victim, she is touched by his story. You can just see it as they speak that the woman is having an inner conflict for the very first time. Through her words, you can sense this inner push and pull between manipulative flirtatiousness and empathetic curiosity. And in the end, the empathetic side wins. The woman now sees herself as someone who can make her own choices and no longer be this empty alien being of service. And in the same moment, she notices herself feeling empathy for life on earth as she notices a fly 
Ray trapped behind the glass. And this entire turn in character is fully established by her letting the deformed man free. The woman soon abandons the van to explore the city and learn more about herself. She attempts to indulge in human desserts, but can't because unfortunately her inner physical form doesn't allow her to. She accepts the invitation to a kind man's place and watches TV with him and spends the night in a regular human home. And on this night, she examines her human body, focusing on her senses and her physical features. It's as if she is now just starting to understand who she is as a human, both emotionally and physically. And of course, because she has completely abandoned her alien mission, we see three additional motorcyclists on the hunt for our main character. After spending time with the kind, loving man who has been very accommodating and thoughtful, the woman kisses him in an attempt to make love and experience love in its most physically intense and passionate form. However, just as it all happens for the first time, she stops it. And I think it's because her sexual organs don't work like a regular woman's would. It's just like when she ate the chocolate cake. The pleasure of sexual intercourse and the pleasure of sugary desserts have no contribution to her goal as an alien, so her physical form will never trigger those pleasing senses. And of course, later on, as a juxtapositioning character to the previous kind, loving male, and to illustrate the balance between humanity, the woman encounters a terribly evil man trying to rape her in the woods. In a moment of defenselessness, she looks up and sees the snow falling from the sky for the first time, which parallels the cold relentlessness that does unfortunately exist in the natural world. For every summer and kind, loving man, there is a winter and an unkind, harmful man. She very soon abandons this human form and the miserable side of human life that she's currently experiencing, so she tears off her human exterior. Horrified by the image of her alien physical form, the man burns her alive. And this ending to me perfectly ties together the film's message about societal pressures and expectations with female beauty. In the beginning, her sole purpose was based entirely on her appearance as a beautiful woman. It was the one thing she needed to fulfill her purpose. Her appearance was literally the only thing about her that was human, and she was appreciated by countless men before they even met her. And the authoritative body above her did everything it could to keep her that way and use her for its larger scale objective. It was once she started questioning who she truly was and learned to become more than just a pretty face that adversity and resistance arose and the authoritative body above her became more concerned as she escaped their control. And when she fully revealed who she truly was under the surface of conventional beauty, she was eliminated from society, seen as someone who doesn't belong, and treated in the opposite way that she was when she entered Earth in the very beginning. And this all makes me rethink who the woman was at the beginning of the movie who our main character takes the clothes from. This woman could also have been an alien who also ended up finding her inner humanity and was killed along the way. This would explain why she shed a tear just before she died. This would all symbolize a continuous cycle of a woman being defined by her physical beauty, then discovering who she is inside, then her physical beauty fading, then being dismissed by her community. I wouldn't say the director is trying to say this is the literal treatment of every woman in the world, but I think it's the director's raw and relentless way of telling us how the world overvalues physical beauty, especially in women, and this creates a lot of emotional pressure. So it makes sense why the first location we visit with our main character is the makeup store. It's her alien idea of what a woman is. Only by experiencing the wonders and horrors of humanity does she learn that there is so much more to who she is under the skin. All right, this is my analysis. Subscribe for weekly videos and please send me recommendations. The Killing of a Sacred Deer is next week, which I can't wait to see. And please let me know your thoughts on Under the Skin. I love this movie and how raw it was. I hope to see you again and thank you so much for watching. See you later.